Um, yes. So I, I think I think you learn very quickly um, when dealing with, say, a scholastic athlete, ad administrator or a scholastic athletic director, um, whether or not that person um, knows rowing. And unfortunately, you know, a, a unfortunate reality too is occasionally you do run into athletic directors who don't care much for your sport. Either way, um, as a uh, as an administrator or as a, a program director in a scholastic environment, um, this person needs to be your ally in some form or another. Um, I've, I've, I've seen a pretty good spectrum in my, in my own experience, and I think that one of the things that, um, that, that most administrators really appreciate is, um, and it is somewhat of a cliche, but just open, open communication. Um, if you can justify what you're doing, justify uh, your financial decision making, your, your roster management decision making, um, if you can explain all of those things um, in a way that fit into the context of the institution, whether it's um, academics, discipline rules, uh, residence life, etc., then um, mostly you will receive the, the support you need. I think, again, um, it, this, this could be a, a tough thing for, for many of us to realize. Um, uh, we're not often being hired because we're genius rowing coaches. We're being hired because someone trusts us to be the adult to run this group of 40, 60, 80, 100 adolescents in a, in a safe and productive manner. And I think that, that um, if, you're, if you're a program director, it's really at your peril to, to focus only on the X's and O's. It's a luxury as well, to focus only on the X's and O's and not on those um, soft skills or those administrative skills that the people in your various offices, uh, residence life, um, athletics, et cetera, will, will be concerned about. Um, I would say, uh, it, it's far easier to burn bridges if you happen to be a very successful coach and you can't handle the financial side or the planning side or the required paperwork side than the other way around where if you're, you're running um, the program in a very competent, uh, transparent manner that, that's, that's productive and healthy, um, your kids are, are doing well, they're, 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 they're having a good time. Um, there won't be as much pressure, I think, to perform. Of course, you know, the holy grail is always having both. Um, n not everyone is always lucky. Sport works in, in very cyclical ways. Um, I think the other thing, too, is that at least I found valuable, certainly in the scholastic world, is find out who your other allies were. Um, as an example, at, at, at um, Deerfield, I learned very early on that um, some of the people who absolutely were so vital in keeping in the loop of what we were doing were the people who maintained our launches and engines. We had a terrific physical plant staff and part of their portfolio was gassing up the launches and winterizing stuff. And, and um, I, I found that, that um, with those folks, uh, some com open communication just you know, first of all, appreciating their efforts, but also um, realizing that, that some of these folks were mechanical geniuses and if something wasn't working, they could get it fixed like that. Yeah. I mean, there are so many times that we would have been literally high and dry if not for being able to call this person and that person. So I think sometimes you'll find your allies in really unexpected unexpected places. You know, the school nurse can be a, or the trainer can be a terrific, terrific ally here in Duxbury. Um, you know, one tremendous example of that is, is um, the strength coach at our school is phenomenal and we've been able to grow our program in a very non-rowing way by having um, a, a, a very intelligent, well thought out strength training plan for our rowing, rowing athletes from someone who, who is passionate about what he does in terms of his, his strength training and gets what we want too. And so I think that, that the idea is rather than, I mean, rowing occasionally has the rep of being str a strange sport or a difficult sport or a, a difficult to understand sport. Um, and so I think if, if, 
i think it would be unwise if you're in any kind of leadership position to have a normal chip on your shoulder and feel like every year you're always playing defense you're always having to justify and explain and and you're constantly feeling backed into the corner um it that's probably not as as healthy a a situation as is as it might be it's it's worth um even though and 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 i'm stealing a line from um the cal rugby coach's presentation jack clark uh who does a very nice presentation on on um you know how winning teams get put together and he has this great line in this in this talk um that was shared with by by chris kerber from cornell at a at the us rowing conference this year where um where he says, you know, you, you don't win any gold medals for operations, um, which is, you know, are the buses on time, is the boathouse clean, uh, is the equipment in good shape? Um, that's true, you don't, but taking care of those details uh, is certainly one of the, the major tasks of anybody in a leadership position or making sure that they've been delegated. Um, I, I think that, um, you know, going back to my early, early, Early in my, my college career, academically, um, I, started, I started college as an archaeology major. Okay. And I was really excited and, and I, I knew my antiquities and I knew my, you know, human evolution and all of that. And then sometime in the second, in the second semester, um, I took my first stats class, the, the statistics class for archaeology. Mm-hmm. And, and at that point... Um, you know, the, the teacher was very matter of fact. He says eighty percent of archaeology happens in the lab, and he's kind of dropped. And, and <laughs> but but I think I think it's analogous to um, at, at, at least certainly at a rowing organization, a high school rowing organization, where your staff might be might be smaller and more people have to shoulder more of the load. As you get further and further up the coaching chain or the the, the program leadership change chain, um, it, it's it's worth being aware that um, more and more of your time will be spent on spreadsheets and receipts and accounting and, and those types of things. And um, while they might not make your team fast, uh, they make your organization stable. Yeah. Um, whether you're part of a school athletic department or a community-based organization such as this at Duxbury, um, it's, it's vital to realize uh, that those aspects of your job start to become as important um, and certainly in some ways more visible than any of the coaching that you do. I think it's quite different at the college level and, and um, you know, where, where there's more sort of support staff built in. But at the same time, I would argue that, that thinking about the non-rowing aspects of your rowing program ultimately makes you a better rowing coach because you, you, you find ways to strengthen your organization and take care of certain key details that maybe on race day, because you've planned better and your bus is functioning, your tent is functioning, and, and your equipment's in great shape, maybe that maybe that gets you a win. Yeah, and I mean, you think you were saying that the operations doesn't create the championship, but you can't create a championship without the Absolutely. operations. You know? Absolutely. And so you know, if you've you know if you've neglected that, it doesn't matter how good a coach you are. You know, if your engine doesn't start, you know, it doesn't matter. Right. You're not going to get out there. You're not going to be able to execute. You right. know, if you if you you know if you've neglected the logistics of a trip and there's a lot of stress in, in terms of getting to the venue and getting into the hotel and, and then transporting back and forth, you know, to the race course, then mm-hmm. it doesn't matter how good your crew is, they're going to suffer from all that again mental stress. Right. You know, right. and, and that mental fatigue. Yeah. Do do, do you really so, want your your team? Do you want your boat to be late to the line because you weren't as diligent as you could have been about? that bus. And again, at most smaller rowing programs or most scholastic programs, that's on you. That's on that's on you as the as the leader.